Hey guys, this is Kelly from Sevens Emporium, and today we're going to talk about a machine slash tech issue. I know most of us have a USB, a thumb drive, that we use to transfer designs to our machine. So you'll put it in your computer, and then you'll put it in your machine, and that's how you get your information back and forth. The problem can come up of wearing out this port on your machine. Mine on my six needle is here on the side. Um, on a single needle, it's built onto the machine. You know, you guys know where that's at. But in either case, you can have the same problem. This port inside here where you can't see, um, there is a board and it has this port attached, soldered to that. Over time, when you put this USB in and out of this drive, it can slowly start to kind of loosen that connection. I know some of you have probably had to take your machine in for service or you have problems where you kind of kind of wiggle it and try to get it to load up. That can be caused from lots of use of transferring designs. Um, so I'm going to tell you a couple of different ways to get around this. Um, my husband is a tech guy and so he has helped me kind of piece together ways to assist me with this. So the first thing that you can do to avoid having to actually use this port on your machine, and this is a really cheap and easy fix and it will save you a lot of trouble. You can get one of these cords. And I have taped mine to my machine because unfortunately the one that I had was really long, but this one has the male end and on the other end of this cord, it has the female end. And I hope you can see this. Cannot. I mean, let me move this up so you can see it. Right there. This is the female end of this. I'm kind of bad videographer today. I didn't realize you guys couldn't see that. Anyway, so this end. And you can do this to save your computer as well. You could do this exact same thing and it will, it will help you because it's better to wear out this replaceable cord. I mean, it's, I don't know how much we paid for it. It wasn't very much. But this end can go into your computer or it can go into the port on your machine where you would normally put your USB. And then what you do is you plug in to that instead that completely relieves the pressure from using the USB that's built in to your machine. So if you wear it out, I mean if you wear out your thumb drive, so what? It's a couple of bucks. Get a new one. If you wear out this cord, it's a few bucks. Get a new one. It's not a big deal um, and that way you're not wearing out something that's hardwired onto your machine or your laptop or your desktop, you can just use this cord and get away with not having to use the actual port on there. The other thing that I have done um, is this cord right here. Mine actually has a way to connect it to a computer. If you don't have that and you just have the USB, you can do the same thing. You would still, you would just get a cord that was the male end on both ends and you would plug one into your USB end on your machine and you would plug the other one into your computer, your little laptop. Now I'll tell you what I have right here. I have kind of an old, it's old, kind of a, it's, I think it's a netbook. And it really is too slow to be on the internet. I think it probably has Windows 7 on it. It really wasn't good for anything. The kids couldn't play games on it. I couldn't really use it for anything much. So what I have done, it has Wi-Fi. And I have now made my machine have Wi-Fi. And I don't have to use this or this anymore. I, I beam the design right over and that is my favorite thing he has helped me hack this and I totally love it I have Windows 10 on my desktop and I'm going to try to show you how to find this computer 
on the other one so that you can save directly to this and avoid wearing out your machine or having to transfer anything or even having to have your computer hooked directly to your machine. Sometimes that doesn't matter. I mean, you would definitely have to have your, your crummy computer hooked to your machine, but I mean your actual laptop that you would use. Okay, so once you have your laptop on your wireless network, you want to hook it up to your, um, to your embroidery machine with your cord. And if you go down to your file section, uh, again, this is a really old computer, so it, it probably looks different than everybody else's. But if you'll go into files where you can see like what your, your connections are over here, it will, when you turn on your sewing machine, it will create a drive for you and it's going to give that a letter just like it would if you plugged in a USB or anything else. So now that it has created this drive, what you're going to need to do is go to that drive, right click on that, and you're going to need to say share. And you have to share this or the next step won't work when you go to find this with your other computer that you want to use to send the designs to it. And it's asking me here advanced sharing. I again do not know a whole lot about this. I just know the bare basics so please don't send me messages and say I need technical help with this because I probably am not going to know the answer to that. I will try to. Um, like I said my husband is a computer tech guy so I can try to find answers for you but this is just kind of a, a general tutorial just so you know that it can be done. And it's telling me here that it's going to share this. I can create some custom options and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just going to say OK. And now this drive is going to be available for the next step. I had someone ask a question and want to know if you could use this same um, wireless setup if you have multiple machines. And the answer to that is absolutely you can do that. The easiest thing that you would do would be if you had a, an available USB port for each of your machines. So say you have three machines, if you have three available USB ports, what you would do in a situation like that would be to go through um, machine by machine and you would hook up your USB cord between your computer and your embroidery machine turn on the machine and your computer is going to say hey I found this drive it's going to give that drive a letter if I were you and I were going to have more than one machine available in this wireless situation I would rename that say you have you know a brother and a singer or whatever or you have two brothers that are maybe different numbers whatever you would do or whatever you want to call those machines I would name those and that way when you're looking through these drives you know which machine is which you would do that for each machine so hook up your USB cable from your computer to your embroidery machine turn on your embroidery machine find that drive name that drive so that you know which machine it's to and share that drive to the network. Those are the important steps. If you happen to have say three machines and you only have two ports you would need to get a pigtail device and I, I looked for my real one but I couldn't find it but it would look something like this pretend that it's all one unit um, this is not. So you have one end that plugs into a USB you have two other ends that come off and you would do that exact same thing. You would just plug in your pigtail, plug in your cord from your pigtail to your embroidery machine. Then you would find your drive, maybe rename it if you want to, and then share that drive out. And that way when you go over and, and do the other steps where you're mapping the drive 
when you map the drive it's actually to this computer it has nothing to do with anything else your drives that are available here are only limited to this computer so this computer sees your drives for your embroidery machines your main computer will see the drive for this computer so that is exactly what you would do if you wanted to hook up you know multiple machines to the same little computer like like what I have here you absolutely can do that the first thing that you want to do as far as getting your your computer networked um, I have to have my crazy computer that's hooked to my machine I have to have that turned on and I have to have the machine turned on in order for it to create the drive. Yours may be different than that. Um, for me, that's how I have to do it. The laptop has to be turned on and the machine has to be turned on to actually make that drive available. And like I said, I'm, I'm not going to go through every tech step because your machines may be different, your computers may be different. So I'm just telling you that it can be done and this is how I have been able to do it. Your jump computer is turned on, your machine is turned on, and we're going to go down here to files. And I've tried to zoom this in as much as I could and I, I don't know if you can see, but again I'm using Windows 10. So I'm going to hit this button and I'm going to go over here to network and it tells me this message right here, it says network discovery is turned off, network computers and devices are not visible, please turn on network discovery in network and sharing center. And if you click OK, it will give you this yellow thing, this bar, it, it should, otherwise you can go to whatever it said and it'll give me the option turn on network discovery and file sharing. So I'm going to turn that on. Okay, so after you get this message, it's going to say, do you want to turn on network discovery and file sharing for all public networks? I'm going to say no because I don't want it everywhere. We're going to right click on this PC we're going to select map network drive and now it's going to let you choose a letter letters that you can't choose or that are already occupied for something else are not available and I'm going to choose M just because that's what I want to use and now you're going to browse I know that the laptop I want to use my junk net laptop is this one already mapped actually. I'm going to say OK and finish. If it wasn't already mapped it would go ahead and map it for me. But now this drive should be available when I go over here. Right there it is. It tells me network connections and it's right here. So if I go in there I can see any designs that I've saved onto that. Okay, so now that I have my drive mapped and everything is squared away, when I have a file, if I'm in my software or if I'm just going through files and I want to send something over to the machine, and this is just a JPEG but it's an example, so I can right click that and I can say send to um, or if you're able to do save as you can do that too um, but send to and then there's my drive and it's sending it directly over to the machine um, let me actually do a file and I'll show you how this works so I'm going to right click I'm going to send to, I'm selecting my M drive, which is what I chose to name my jump drive. It says it's sent. Let's go over here and we'll see if it has sent. Okay, so here we are at the machine. 
Mine actually has a button for being linked to the computer. Um, I am honestly not 100% certain how this works when you only have a single needle because it doesn't have that option. I'm going to assume that whenever you go into your sewing machine, your embroidery machine, if you're on screen, it will tell you that you have that design there available sent to you. Um, I don't know because my single needle machine does not have a screen. So I'm a little bit in the dark there. Like I said, I'm, I'm not getting all of the technical information, but anyway. So you'll choose that. There's the design that I sent over. And now, without having to use a USB, I have magically sent via my really crappy computer with the Wi-Fi the design to my machine. Thanks for watching.